evening, my fellow Americans. Today we're gonna get real, and the hit dog might howl. So if you take heed to anything I say and get emotional about it, shame on you in the first place. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's topic, today's issue, today's speech, we are gonna talk about an issue that roughly one third of the entire U.S. population is facing. We're talking about 347 million, 337,700. 93 approximately Americans. That group includes about 3.8 million teachers, almost 50 million students, and over 63 million parents with students under the age of 18. We're gonna start this scenario with a high school student, 2005, 313 Highland Park, Michigan. I'm a prolific writer and all, but this story is all facts. The journey started in 2005. I switched majors in 2007 and graduated college for the first time in 2012. My first job, I made $36,100 teaching in the Michigan Title I public school. People who I went to school with in the College of Education called me lucky. Why? Because some of them took jobs that made $30,000 and they got paid once a month. Let me tell you all now, my friends from college who are in the field of education, they're all in different fields now. You may wonder, well, why are you still going through it? Because somebody had to go through it to let you know what's going on. I sidetracked my youth to be a leader and role model at the age of 24. I accepted that, and I also accepted graduating $84,000 in debt because I wanted to better myself. I made that sacrifice for children I don't know, for families I never met. For what? What's my job description? Teach curriculum and citizenship for short. But what's expected of me? <laughs> How much time you got? Advisor, secretary, receptionist, liaison, doctor, nurse, counselor, camp counselor, bilingualist, trilingualist, lawyer, judge, jury, role model, father figure, mother figure, principal, mentor, coach, behavior specialist, welfare officer, food bank, mediator, referee, advocate, etc., etc. All of that is fine. It is what it is. But pay us for We need to balance the scale. About a month ago, I was asked, what do teachers do on weekends? If we're lucky enough, we get to unwind on Friday, maybe run some errands before we fall asleep on the couch. Saturday in a building with strong chemistry, may have a gathering at someone's house. Lesson plans on Sunday and back at it Monday. He said, so y'all get one day off? I thought, we are a salary. We only get one day off. All of that to make $36,100 my first year. And that's before taxes. That was 2013. What about now, you may ask? I can you talking to the screen now. Well, this past fall, we negotiated, if that's what you want to call it, a 2.5% raise. At my salary, that would be about $16.25 or $62.50 every two weeks. I don't know about you all, but I get deducted at about 38 to 40%, so that would leave me with about $38.75. That's not even a full tank of gas. And for what? What's my job description? To educate the leaders of tomorrow today? You see how they do us? We need to balance the scale. My first year I made $36,100 as a bachelor. So that means I had to pay rent. I had to pay the car note, insurance, groceries, or what I could afford. So that means I ate tuna sandwiches, turkey sandwiches, egg sandwiches, and for dessert I had maxed out credit cards. New teachers today in 2024, a lot of them have second jobs just to survive. I remember my first year, I was staring out the window, looking in the stars, looking at the moon. And I asked God, I said, God, why am I here? Not on, not, no self-harm, no self-harm at all. I'm just asking curiously, why am I here? Because I went to school for all those years. I accumulated $84,000 worth of debt. And then I graduated working in a job, owing double my salary plus some. So I, I really looked out those windows. They, they laughing at me here. I'm, I'm serious, y'all. I'm serious. So right now we're in a media room. You can't really, you know, see anybody in here because the cameras are pointing at me. But they're laughing at me. All right. I'm serious though. All right. So I'm looking out the window. And notice how quick I picked back up on that story. So you know it's real. So I'm looking out that window. And I'm, I'm gazing at the stars. God, why am I here? Why am I here? Again, no self harm. None at all. I'm just genuinely curious. Why did you bring me out of Highland Park? with all this debt, just to owe so much money, making so little money. And that's when I found out. Days to weeks later, I was going through my old laptop, I found the old file, and I found a story that I started when I was in college just to remember my memories, you know, just to keep hold of my memories. And I said, wow, this story is pretty, this is pretty good, man, keep going. So I kept that book going, and that book became Michigan International University. So when I looked out that window, I got my answers. Find happiness, pay it forward, reproduce, amongst other things. But that's what I work towards every day of my life. I got lucky to find a way to monetize my words. Some teachers come to school starving. 
and have to put on a good face in front of 25 students, and some of which may also be starving. That's wrong, that's not right. What it's really doing is taking advantage of a loving nature of a teacher's soul. If we really care about the students, to pay the teachers. Not only will you have happier teachers, but you'll have the brightest minds in front of our students, because bright minds want to get paid. I turned down a teaching job in Dubai in 2015 because I was coming off of what I thought was a bad year. I thought my scores were too low and didn't want to leave like that because I had a reputation to maintain. See the kind of sacrifices you make? Hindsight is 2020, back to the story, where they would have happily matched my salary because they treat their teachers well over there. It was tax-free, rent-free, included transportation, work and leisure, two round trips to the United States, free healthcare too. While in America, our highest paid teachers are million dollar coaches because our country prioritizes entertainment and sports over its education system. They're teaching sports, <laughs> but they're teaching. I love to have fun too. I'll marsh you, I probably would. All right, but at some point we have to grow up, take control, and find a way to balance the scale. When elected president, teacher pay will either rise substantially or it'll be tax exempt. There's no way, and I mean no way, a teacher should have two jobs, especially when they have 20 before starting the first lesson. We got a lot to talk about with this outdated, underappreciated education system. In our motto, the school day will decrease by two hours and the work day will decrease by three hours. With this new work day, the full-time employee will now work 25 hours with a pay bump to offset the shorter hours. What the pandemic taught us on the business side of things is that we can do more with less, quality over quantity. The reason that we're doing this is to give families more time to spend with each other so that all their time isn't spent on the clock or in a classroom and when they get home, everybody's too tired to enjoy each other. We need to balance the scale. We're doing this so families can spend more time with each other in the daytime and so that parents don't have to take a sick day to take their child to a two o'clock appointment. We're doing this so that high school students can stay out of the streets. The 40 hours that their parents used to spend at work, now down to 25, we expect those 15 to go to their students. If Henry Ford ushered in a 40 hour work week right here in Highland Park, then I guess it's up to a Highland Park kid to balance the scale. POTUS 2024, be guard, out.